Hello and welcome to Plus Sports on Plus TV Africa. It's Tuesday, wet Tuesday at that, but we're here to bring you some heating up sports news. My name is Mikhail Tinubu and welcome. Now, Germany hit the training pitch on Monday, July 11th, in preparation for the game against Spain that will take place in London today. The teams will meet to decide who will lead Group B of the Women's European Championship. Germany striker Leah Schuller has been ruled out of the Euro 2022 top of the table Group B match against Spain in Brentford today after she tested positive for COVID-19. The national team said Germany coach Martina Vos Tecklenburg shared her concerns about the emerging wave of COVID-19 cases among the tournament's participants. Uh, she said, we asked UEFA beforehand to think about whether we could bring 26 players. That has not been ensured, although the men can do it at the World Cup, she said. That does not reflect my personal idea of fair play. Record eight-time Euro winners Germany said in a statement that Schuler was self-isolated. Of course, we all hope that she is doing well and that she won't feel too bad so that we can perhaps count on her again in the tournament, said the team's defender, Sarah Dawson. Um, favorites Spain, who lost midfielder and Ballon d'Or winner Alexia Putellas on the eve of the tournament after the captain suffered a torn anterior cruciate ligament in training, beat Finland 4-1 in their opening game. Now, COVID-19 continues to be uh, a problem for close-quarter tournaments. And um, it would be nice to see the women's sports get the same consideration that the men's football have been enjoying. 26 players is currently the standard for men's international football. And if the women could benefit from such, it might alleviate some of the stresses and worries that are bound to arise due to COVID-19. Now, Welsh international and former Spurs and Real Madrid star Gareth Bale was unveiled to the media in Los Angeles on Monday at he, as he signed for LAFC. Bale is the second high-profile international signing for the club after inter Italian defender Giorgio Chiellini joined the club from Juventus. Bale said he was excited to join the project and said he was delighted to have received a very warm welcome in L.A. The Welsh international said he felt the standard in Major League Soccer was rising fast, adding he felt Europeans had an outdated impression of the league's standards. I'm sure the league is much better than we probably hope, but um, let's face it, the fact is you are only as good as your greatest opponents. And in uh, uh, the MLS, the football cannot be on the same level as European football. The likes of uh, Bale once upon a time plied their trade against the elites of the sports and the likes of Manchester City, Chelsea, um, Manchester United, Barcelona, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, all of these clubs will continue to add the top quality that exists in the game until perhaps a day that the MLS equals in rivalry and in standard and viewership numbers to the Champions League in Europe. Till then, England hammered Norway by a record 8 nil margin in a sensational display at the Women's European Championship on Monday, July 11th, as the hosts became the first team to book a place in the quarterfinals and the first to score eight goals at a Euro final. England, who on Wednesday left a Women's Euros record crowd at Old Trafford, wanted more after their 1-0 win against Austria in the tournament opener, dominated the match against the poorly defending Norway, their toughest group opponents on paper. The Lionesses went 1-0 up through Georgia Stanway's 12-minute penalty and netted again three minutes later with Lauren Hemp 
bundling Beth Mead's cross over the line. The forward initially saw the offside flag going up, a decision which was overturned following a VAR intervention. England, who are on their longest ever unbeaten run of 16 games, all under coach Serena Wigman, who took over from Phil Neville in September 2021, already led 3-0 before the 30-minute mark after forward Ellen White joined the score sheet. Mead went on to add two more goals for England inside four minutes. First nodding home after a wonderful cross from Hemp and then taking advantage of an individual effort. Pressing high and threatening to score from every attack, England made it 6-0 before halftime as White stretched to put the ball in once more following a beautiful cross from Frank, uh, Fran Kirby. Let's face it, the English female team is one of the best in female football. They're ahead of most teams in the world, and just like their male counterparts were ahead of most teams around the world in the 60s and 70s. But uh, eventually, a lot of those teams caught up. And Wigman is no slouch. He's one of the very best in uh, the um, female football. So the idea of England beating Norway 8 0 is not really unexpected. Perhaps uh, having only won by 1 0 against Austria was more of a surprise. But we're going to see, I believe, more of um, score lines like this, especially if England continue to go up against teams like Norway. Eventually, they will come up against the likes of Germany and Spain, and then their true strengths will be on display. And if they can get past such teams, then we'll know they're truly ready to contend for this Euro Cup. Now, multiple Olympic and world champion Mo Farah was uh, brought to Britain from Djibouti at the age of nine and was forced to do housework and childcare in exchange for food, he told the BBC. The 39-year-old Briton, who was born in Somalia, added his name had uh, been changed to Mohammed Farah from Hussein Abdi Kahin in the fake travel documents used to fly him to Britain by a woman he had never met before. Once he arrived in the UK, the woman took him to a home in Honslow. Uh, West London and tore apart a paper with the contact details of his relatives. Her family did not allow him to go to school until the age of 12. For years, I just kept blocking it out. But you can only block it out for so long, he said in the BBC documentary, which will be broadcast this week. Often, I would just lock myself in the bathroom and cry. The only thing I could do to get away from this living situation was to get out and run. His physical education teacher, Alan Watkinson, contacted social services and helped him find a foster family in the Somali community after Farah told him what he was going through. I felt like a lot of stuff was lifted off my shoulders and I felt like me. That's when Mo came out, the real Mo, Farah said. I had no idea there were so many people who are going through exactly the same thing that I did. It just shows how lucky I was. What really saved me, what made me different, was that I could run. He said in May his elite track career could be over after he finished runner-up in the London 10,000 meter race and ruled out taking part in this month's World Championships. This story um, reminds us that there's so much hardship, so much heartbreaking uh, things going on in the world, and some of it even happened to these uh, elite athletes. The fact that even a Mo Farah had to go through uh, basically what amounted to kidnapping and child trafficking for the benefit of some European, some English woman who simply wanted a maid, a house help. It's heartbreaking. And one of the reasons why these people get away with this kind of thing for so long is because 
It is out of sight and therefore out of mind. And many victims are even unaware of the help that is available to them. If Mo Farah hadn't confided, if he had been so afraid, so fearful that he would be returned to Somalia, to even confide in someone who ultimately would end up helping free him from that situation. The truth is, Mo Farah may be a name we would have never heard of. Moscow-born Alina Rybankina, uh, Rybankina, 23, arrived at Kazakhstan's capital, Nur Sultan, on Monday, July 11th, after winning the women's singles Wimbledon title. In a year when Russian players were banned from Wimbledon, Rybakina uh, rallied from a set down to defeat Tunisia's On Jabers 3-6-6-2-6-2 on Saturday, July 9th, to become the first player from Kazakhstan to win a Grand Slam ti uh, singles title. With Russian and Belarusian players banned from the uh, grass court major following Moscow's invasion of Ukraine, Rybankina um, would have been excluded had she not switched allegiances from Russia in 2018 for better funding and support. Before Saturday's final, Rybankina and Jabba had met three times and each had won a match apiece before the Kazakh retired due to illness in Chicago in their last showdown a year ago. Rybakina was only 20 when her career graph went on an upward trajectory around the start of the 2020 season as she lifted a second WTA title in Hobart and also reached the finals in Shenzhen, uh, St. Petersburg and Dubai. She broke into the top 20 of the women's world rankings in February 2020, but saw her progress stymied uh, due to a thigh injury before the COVID-19 pandemic forced the suspension of the tennis season. The Moscow-born player, who shifted allegiance to Kazakhstan four years back, reached her maiden Grand Slam quarterfinals at the French Open last year, before making the fourth round at the manicured lawns of the All England Club. Now, former Formula One Supremo Bernie Ecclestone uh, has been charged with fraud over a failure to declare more than four hundred million pounds of overseas assets to the British Tax Authority. Prosecutors said on Monday, the Crown Prosecution Service said Ecclestone, uh, 91, faced one count of fraud by false representation. This follows a complex and worldwide criminal investigation by HMRC's Fraud Investigation Service, said Simon York, director at the Fraud Investigation Service of Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs. The first hearing in his case is due to be held on August 22nd at um, London's Westminster Magistrates Court. In 2015, Eccleston uh, faced a demand from HMRC for payment of more than £1 billion in relation to a family trust. He said then that HMRC had not respected an agreement made in 2008 over the Bambino Trust, set up for the benefit of his ex-wife Slavika and daughters Tamara and Petra, and he was taking legal action. The Briton was ousted as Formula One Supremo in 2017 when US-based Liberty Media took over the sports commercial rights. He maintains an office in London but now spends most of his time abroad with residences in Switzerland and Ibiza as well as a farm in Brazil. He has continued to make headlines, however, and in May, Brazilian police said they had arrested him after finding a handgun in his luggage as he was trying to leave the country. Eccleston acknowledged owning it, but said he was unaware it was in his luggage. He was freed to leave after paying bail. Now, there tends to be uh, a regularity of these kinds of things happening with powerful men within sports. Only recently, Sepp Blatter and uh, 
uh, Michel Platini just got um, acquitted of the charges of uh, fraud and possible uh, money laundering. But there are still many who believe that even though they have been found not guilty, it's just a matter of technicalities that allowed for that uh, verdict. Now, it's a Formula One um, former Supremo, and who knows who it's going to end up making news. In this guy's case, he has been making headlines for years now, even at one point in June, saying he would take a bullet for um, uh, Vladimir Putin, uh, stating that he was a first-class human being. He had to apologize, but a lot of these people seem to be so privileged, so high up in sports that the, the effects of their actions, the effects of their words don't seem to matter to them as much when it comes to how they represent themselves on the world stage and how it inevitably damages the reputation of the sports that they represent and the organizations that are supposed to be regulating and managing these sports. If such flawed men are in, allowed into such powerful positions, how then could the sport ever truly progress when corruption is only uh, a bad decision away? My name is Mikhail Tinubu. As always, it's a pleasure having you join us on Plus Sports on Plus TV Africa. Remember, life is never boring with some sports. Have a wonderful day.